Good evening. My name is Rahul Basim. I work as a principal consultant within the mobility practice of Austin Sullivan. Based in Singapore, I manage the digital retail program across Asia Pacific. Today, I'm happy to give you an overview of the digital retailing in the automotive industry. Retail as such is undergoing massive changes. We have identified four mega trends that will drive this change. One, driven by the affordable internet services, there will be a surge in consumers interacting with brands online across industries. Two, physical stores will continue to reinvent themselves. Combined with ambient commerce, purchase automation, and digital assistance, technology will revolutionize all aspects of retail leading to a personalized and fulfilling customer experience. Journeys will become more integrated, intelligent, and connected as people demand personalized mobility solutions. Mobility as a service will unlock 1.3 trillion US dollars worth of revenue globally by 2025. Number four, the digital adoption will be accelerated due to the COVID-19 pandemic, pushing people to interact with brands using safer and convenient channels. What we're showing here is the typical customer journey when buying a vehicle. Now, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many parts of this customer journey have become broken. Aspects which needed physical interaction between the consumer and the brand will now also have an online presence. For example, consumers now are reevaluating whether there's really a need to go to their nearest dealership multiple times before they buy their vehicle due to the fear of the virus and being in crowded places. Now, can this really be done online instead? Can they trade in their vehicle and receive vehicle financing also online? How about getting vehicles delivered to their doorsteps? Convenience and safety will remain top of the mind of consumers. Hence, there is an increased urgency to create an online presence to supplement the offline channels. When we talk about the new customer journey, it needs to be digital, personalized, and convenient needs to be unique to the brand, which is built around supporting the capabilities. Also, it needs to be built around its processes. That's to be unique to the brand's strengths, unique to match the customer's needs, built leveraging all channels of communication and other customer engagement modes. The appeal of a customer journey is far greater when coupled with the brands. Globally, online vehicle sales are expected to breach the 1 million mark by 2025 on the way to 6 million vehicles units sold online by 2025, growing at a compounded annual growth rate of around 39%. By 2025, China will contribute to over 40% of the vehicles sold online. And South Korea, Australia are other countries in this region which will lead the digital retail. Specialized technology solution providers will play a dominant role to support the automotive industry to take their offerings online across the customer journey. For example, third party solution providers such as CapHPI, Kelly Blue Book, Auto Trader offer vehicle evaluation services for vehicle trade in and help the customers get instant quotes online. Vehicle delivery is also enabled by solution providers such as Assertus. Certain OEMs such as Hyundai, Mercedes-Benz also offer contactless vehicle delivery at their dealership. In the next few slides, I will talk about such significant trends that is driving automotive digital retail across the APAC region. Now, brands have offered virtual showrooms for a while now, wherein the customers can go online to the OEM or the dealer website, browse through all the product offerings. These virtual showrooms are now becoming sales lead generators by collecting customer information and pushing it to the nearest dealership. For example, a customer can request a test drive online and this information is then pushed to the nearest dealer who then contacts the person. Porsche, for example, is when you go to a Porsche website, they can configure the vehicles and get a Porsche code. So this code is used across all the channels, including the dealership. So when a customer goes to the Porsche dealer, he can pull up all the information of the vehicle and get it delivered. OEMs are also working towards providing a dealer-like experience at the customer's home to experience the vehicles at the click of a button. 
augmented reality and virtual reality is becoming crucial to deliver such online retail experiences. Hyundai Australia customers can select and configure their vehicle of their choice online and see how it fits in their garage or in their parking area. At the dealership, salesperson can show potential customers the car's built-in safety features or even, uh, even the colors and accessories simply by pointing the tablet device at the vehicle. For sure, let's customers experience its products online using virtual reality headgear. Customers can experience the vehicle as close to reality even before the launch of the vehicle. In the age of social distancing and reduced footfall at the dealerships, wherein people are hesitant to walk into their dealership and talk to their salesperson, video chat solution providers such as C8 Now, Sofas 3 are enabling buyers to get a personalized experience through the video solution providers and talk to their salesperson. Customers can also experience the vehicle. They can negotiate with the salesperson from the comfort of their homes. Next, at providers such as Drive Chat, Sales Chat Australia, Live Person are enabling dealerships to provide 24 seven chat support and increase engagements with the customers from the comfort of their homes. Offering vehicle trade-in and vehicle financing is a crucial step to digital retailing. Toyota Australia, for example, offers trade-in valuation online at their website. Dealers buy customers' current car and offset it with the price of the new car. The local dealer contacts the customer and completes the deal. Singapore also ties up with the traditional banks to offer car loans on the loan amount and the length of the loan to complete the entire deal online. In Philippines, Hyundai online market experience ties up with the banks to offer auto loans online and the vehicle gets delivered to the customer's home if they choose to do so. In China, e-commerce players such as Maodo and Baozun provide short-term lease and loans through tie-ups with OEMs. BYD is an example. Car buying platforms such as G-Forces, Roadster, Digital Motors allow dealers to bring the car buying process online. Buyers can search the dealer inventory online by linking to the dealer's DMS, build a deal, value their trade-in, add accessories. Such platforms don't really serve as the dealership's company website. These softwares allow buttons to appear through the dealership website and to show the buyer that the all the dealership offerings are online. Typically, 10% of consumers who buy the vehicles buy it fully online. Indeed, we have noted an evolving interest towards the agency retail model, wherein dealers simply act as agents and are paid a commission for every vehicle. OEMs own the vehicle inventory and dealers act as enablers of the sale. Price is set by the manufacturers and not by the retailers, leading to price transparency and uniformity across. It was introduced in South Africa way back in 2017, then in Sweden, and it has expanded to few other countries across Australia and also Europe. So in summary, the online retail is no longer a nice to have, it's a must have. With social distancing top of the mind of the customers, digital tools such as augmented reality, Virtual reality is helping customers experience the brand from the comfort of their homes. There will be a surge of third party solution providers, thereby increasing the efficiency of the entire retail system. The online channels will supplement the offline channels and thereby a seamless exchange between them. Further, we expect consolidation of dealerships to create large dealer groups. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Sorvena. I'm the Managing Director of BMW Group Asia here in Singapore. And within the next 10 minutes, uh, I would like to give you an insight into our digital retail strategy. And we called it FIGITAL, yeah, which is a combination of physical and digital retailing. When we take a look back to March, yeah, sales were impacted globally because of the lockdown across all markets. But in Q3, we have seen already a good recovery. In the year-on-year -year comparison, in Q3, we managed to have a 9.8% growth for the BMW brand 
And here, Asia contributed a lot to this recovery. We have seen very positive growth in Korea, in China, in Russia, and in Singapore. Uh, and this is due, of course, to our strong brand and portfolio, but also due to our good retail strategy. The key to success for the retail strategy is to provide the customer with a so-called seamless customer journey. What does it mean? It means we have to combine all offline and online activities to a seamless customer experience. And this sounds from a PowerPoint chart very easy, yeah, but in reality, it's not. Why? Because we have a lot of customer touch points, what you can see here. And first of all, let's take a look to our so-called sales funnel management. Yeah, it starts with creating awareness, then with consideration, then with the intent to buy. Then we try to bring our customers into our cars with a test drive, and finally with a purchase. Yeah, and during COVID-19, we had to replace physical experiences with digital experiences. And so we started with our BMW digital showroom. Of course, all the information with our, our customers collect starts with going to our BMW website from there into the BMW digital showroom. Uh, and there we provided a lot of information and not only about the cars, also we provided information about contactless test drive booking. Uh, the people could watch virtually test drives on YouTube, or they could get online consultations via live streams with our sales consultants. Uh, and finally, they could place a deposit for their orders uh, and buying online the cars. And then it comes to the physical world, uh, because we still have to deliver the cars to our customers. Uh, not only for buying, also for the test drives. And this we did with the so-called doorstep delivery for test drives and for the final home delivery yeah, when the people uh, have purchased the car. So uh, here you can see how it works a little bit. It starts with a multimedia engagement yeah, to create awareness, to attract the customer to our web pages. Yeah, then we have to nurture the purchased interest from home. Yeah, this is what I just mentioned, the BMW showroom, where he can get all the information what he needs to purchase a car. Uh, and then I think what is really most important is to secure the purchased interest finally. And we call this call to action, where finally the customer has to deposit, to make a deposit for the order. Yeah, to book a test drive or to book finally the car yeah, or to start the chat and how it works. Yeah, finally, that we give the customer a little bit more the touch and feel of a showroom. You can see in this nice short video here. Yeah, the customer can come into our showroom yeah, and then he can decide in the showroom where he wants to go. Yeah, to which car he wants to go and all what you can see here with the blue spots. Yeah, the customer can get more information about the car or features of the car and everything. And the customer can decide itself where he wants to go, to which car he wants to go and what information he would like to, to get for this. Yeah, and I think this is a nice example how you can bring these two worlds together in a nice emotional and entertaining way. But of course, we think the showroom still plays an important role in the purchasing process. Yeah? Why? Yeah, for example, here in Singapore, probably purchasing the car is the second most expensive decision in your, in your life. Yeah? After buying, of course, an HDB or a condo or something like that, yeah, the purchase decision for the car is an important one. Yeah, and this is why our customers still want to go to our showroom to experience the car, to feel and touch the cars, to compare the cars, to see the dimensions and the design, and finally to make the test drive. 
And also why it is important uh, for some customers to come to our showroom is to experience our brand. And this is why we still believe that the showroom plays an important part in the purchase process. When it comes to after sales experience, and I think for the after sales experience there is really a big potential that we will see this in future really contactless so why i think for after sales for some people it's only a time consuming process to bring the car to our workshop and to pick it up afterwards yeah, but this we can do now really in a contactless experiences so it starts with booking a service appointment you can select the service which you require. Of course, you can select the date and time. Yeah? And then we pick up your car at home and bring it to our workshop. And in the workshop, yeah, you will get for your approval through a smart video, yeah, the service cost estimation. Yeah? So, and then finally you make the online payment and we deliver the car to your doorstep again and i think this is a really a very convenient way how you can do the after sales service at bmw and i think i have here a nice video which summarizes it how easy and convenient this can be give your bmw all the attention it needs without stepping out of your home book a service with bmw contactless experience visit our website log in with your credentials Select your dealership and the service you want for your BMW. Choose a day and time that suits you best. Verify your details and you're all set. Once your BMW is examined, all details related to your service are shared through a video ensuring complete transparency. Rest assured, your BMW is in safe hands as only certified technicians service it and make sure your journeys are always smooth. On completion, you can make a hassle-free online payment. Your BMW makes its way to you only after being thoroughly sanitized because we are committed to your joy and safety in equal measure. Looking forward to seeing you behind the wheel soon. BMW Contactless Experience. So I think especially for after sales, there is huge future potential for this contactless experience. So what are the key factors for success in the digital retailing? I think first of all, it's the people and the mindset of the people on all levels here in our national sales company, but also at the dealerships. Yeah? And especially for all the people who engage with customers, they have to be familiar with the new sales communication channels and they have to, to do it like this yeah, what what they want what they want to do and second yeah it's the it solutions i think especially it solutions play a major role for digital retailing and sometimes this is the biggest challenge because we have in many companies and dealerships we have an existing it infrastructure yeah, and then it is a challenge to integrate new digital modules which we need and then it comes to the third success factor and this is one size doesn't fit all we have completely different situations in our countries complete different uh, companies and infrastructure yeah? and so we have to have a flexible approach yeah? and we have to develop so-called plug and play modules so in a summary, we think the future will be a combination of physical and digital tools and experiences. Yeah, and the BMW group will definitely develop in that direction.
Thank you very much. And I hope for a fruitful discussion. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me here today at the Intelligent Mobility Virtual Summit. My name is Timothy Tam, and I'm the Regional Head of Motors at Lazada, the leading e-commerce platform of Southeast Asia and part of the Alibaba Group. The key word for many businesses this year has been digitization, which in the automotive industry extends far beyond simply coming online. Online to offline, or O2O as it is most commonly referred to, has been a key driver for digitization in the automotive industry. And I'd like to share with you how both consumers and brands can benefit from it, some proven levers of how to execute O2O successfully, and the outlook for O2O in Southeast Asia. So a bit about myself. I'm originally from Malaysia and I'm currently based in Singapore. Uh, in my role at Lazada, I oversee the automotive and motorcycle categories for the region, focusing on category and assortment strategy, product developments, and external brand engagement. And I'm fortunate to be part of an industry that I'm massively passionate about, as I'm a true petrol head at heart as well. So in Lazada, the motors category consists of three key verticals. The core part of our business is drop shipping of automotive parts, accessories, and riding gear, where we have millions of products on the platform shipped directly to consumers. However, we have recently been shifting our focus to vehicle sales and automotive services, both of which are fulfilled through O2O, and this has been our fastest growing segment, especially this year. This has been especially driven by Lasmol, our exclusive brand dedicated platform, where we work directly with over 100 automotive brands across Southeast Asia. And I'll share with you why so many international brands are working with us to accelerate their digitization, especially through O2O. So the automotive industry has been continuously evolving across multiple aspects, especially in safety, comfort, and efficiency driven by the ever increasing demands and expectations of consumers and retailing is no exception. Just two decades ago, most cars only had seat belts and airbags, while today it's almost impossible to sell any car without a suite of ADAS. And the same thing can be said about retailing today, driven by the evolution of the automotive shopper. In today's world of demand, where your lunch, a taxi ride or groceries are just a tap away on your smartphone, consumers have become more impatient than ever demanding ultimate convenience and seamlessness. This year especially, safety from COVID-19 has also become a major demand and consumers want to be able to shop from the convenience and safety of their homes. Consumers have also evolved to better educate themselves on their purchase decisions. And this has been made so much easier today with the abundance of information available online. The dealerships or their mechanics are no longer their sole source of information. And this is where I see the biggest untapped opportunity of O2O to be. So consumers are continuously looking for more information, but there's a massive gap in terms of converting information into action. And this is where O2O plays such a pivotal role. O2O allows brands to reach millions of consumers, educate them, and convert them into paying customers through either lead generation to a dealership or getting an auto service at a brand partner workshop. O2O also allows brands to have direct access and engagement with end consumers. The definition of customer for many automotive brands today are dealers and distributors, and not the actual consumer who is the end user. And this has made it especially challenging for brands to truly understand them and react to their changing demands. Our brand partners have leveraged the insights derived from O2O to make critical business decisions by combining the real-time detailed sales funnel data of how their products are searched or viewed by consumers and the resulting conversion of purchase rates with the demographic and geographic data of these purchases. This direct and continuous consumer engagement also drives increased customer retention and lifetime value. Many of our brand partners have seen repurchase rates of over 50% on Lazada, which is made possible through targeted and timely product recommendations based on pro uh, product purchase history and sharing the latest product updates and promotion to brand followers. And with brands having direct access and better engagement to consumers, consumers clearly benefit too. They are better educated by information from the brand directly, which has become increasingly important with the amount of misinformation online. O2O also helps solve the problem of price transparency and quality assurance. And this is especially important for consumers who aren't the most automotive savvy. I've personally heard countless stories myself from Lazada customers who buy their auto services through us because they know the price they see is the price they pay and they are assured on the quality of the service based on real customer reviews. O2O also provides consumers with a more seamless shopping experience and is in fact a necessity for most automotive products. 
as educated as consumers are getting, they still need the right offline expertise and equipment to help them install their tires and replace their oils. And O2O provides an end-to-end -end solution beyond simply shipping products to a consumer's home and leaving them to find their own mechanic to install it for them. For O2O to work effectively though, a traffic and conversion driven strategy is crucial. And I'll share three key proven strategies from some of our brand partners. The first is having market differentiating exclusive offers and promotions. This is absolutely essential to drive conversion. And the lack of this is one of the most common reasons brands have failed on e-commerce. By having an online exclusive offer, consumers have a higher propensity to make a purchase immediately instead of putting it off, thinking they would just visit the showroom or install it later, which often doesn't end up happening. Some of the most effective exclusive mechanics include lowered financing rates, discounted down payment vouchers, direct to home test drives, trim upgrades, and free merchandise and accessories. Exclusive vehicle models have the capability to drive higher brand awareness and sway consumers even more to make an immediate purchase. And we've been fortunate enough to work with such innovative brands like Volkswagen and Ford to offer Lasmol exclusive vehicle models, all of which were sold out during 11.11. And with how e-commerce has reset the way consumers shop by expecting the best deals during these mega campaigns like 11.11 and 12.12, it's more important than ever for brands to ensure their best exclusive promotions and vehicles coincide with these campaigns. And another key success lever for O2O is ensuring the complete assortment is available with extensive offline location coverage. So Pirelli has just launched with us in Thailand this year and is now one of the most successful brand partners for us on O2O, driven by the complete range of products listed at competitive prices, combined with the coverage of over 150 workshops nationwide for installation. And these levers you see here have been successful not only on Lasmol, but also on Tmall through Alibaba in China. The last publicly released number of vehicles sold by Tmall was 100,000 units in 24 hours during 11.11 in 2016. So you can imagine how much this has grown since then. And this explosion of O2O in China has provided us with a sneak peek of the potential we foresee in Southeast Asia. Sure, China and Southeast Asia are two totally different markets, but keep in mind that the population of Southeast Asia is almost half of China and is one of the fastest growing middle-class populations. In this region, we are expecting O2O to continue the current triple digit annual growth until at least 2025. And I'm confident we will also be selling 100,000 cars in one day here eventually. O2O will also be the first major and necessary step into digitization for automotive brands, especially with the challenges and limitations brought about by COVID to, uh, to operate purely offline. Uh, simply going online doesn't work for some products and O2O is the best transitional step to combine the reach convenience and safety of online with the offline expertise consumers still require while ensuring the involvement and sustainability of the entire ecosystem. O2O allows brands to direct more traffic and consequentially more sales to their dealers and installers and is not meant to cannibalize them, which is a false preconception for brands to go digital. O2O also unlocks direct engagement channels with consumers and consequentially a wealth of data about them. Brands which not only leverage but act upon the data derived from O2O will have a significant advantage to differentiate themselves by offering the right products to the right consumer segments at the right time based on their demographics, geographics, and behavior. And it is this level of unprecedented personalization that will give these automotive brands a major competitive edge, stay relevant, and be the choice of more consumers. So thank you everyone for your time and also to Frost and Sullivan for this opportunity to share some insights on the acceleration of digitization through O2O. I'm happy to discuss with anyone further and you can reach out to me by my email or LinkedIn. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you. Hello and good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and very, very welcome to our live panel on the future of automotive retailing. As Chica just mentioned, please throughout the session, post your question in the question shot. We'll try to make it as interactive as possible, answering as many questions as possible. And without further ado, I would like to welcome to our panel Christopher from BMW. Timothy from Lazada, Siam from CDK, and um, I would like to open the discussion now. So, um, 
I am already seeing questions. So, Christopher, I think the first question goes to you. It's a really simple question, so no pressure. So, people are obviously picking up the digital element, but there is still a bit of reluctance. So, people are asking me, Christopher, do you really not expect the death of the dealership? Are you not just all lining up to shoot the network down? A bit controversial. Over to you. No, I, uh, <laughs> first of all, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. So first of all, uh, I do really not expect the death of the, of the dealership. I think the dealership will remain the backbone of our sales uh, strategy. Of course, I think it will, it will change the role and how we commu communicate with our customers will change and will continue to, to evolve. Yeah, but the dealership uh, has, of course, also to to uh, evolve, and maybe to give you some mm -hmm. figures. Ten years ago, yeah, customer mm -hmm. visited dealerships uh, an average of seven times per purchase. Five years ago, only four times, and today maybe, yeah, we are at two times that the customer visit our dealerships. So, and this means, yeah, we believe customer will spend less time in our showrooms in the future but this was also the trend before covid yeah? customers were already spending more time online and on social media platforms to get information or to research for third party expert uh, reviews i think in the future our dealers won't have the luxury and time to build a relationship with the customer in the limited times they visit the showroom and they'll need to learn how to connect with our customers online and to conduct the sales process online and this means our dealers must provide our customers with a seamless transition when moving from the digital showroom to the physical showroom. And the experience needs to be easy, personalized and fun. And different skills will be required to be successful in the dealership of the future. And uh, the key to make this happen is state-of-the-art uh, technology yeah, that provides sales consultants with the information they need, such as the detailed customer data or real-time vehicle configurations, especially when your customer enters the showroom. And I think there's another trend. I think we may also see a separation of sales and service, as there's no reason to have them physically in one location if more and more customers opt for pickup or delivery for service for after sales. Yeah, so that means definitely the dealership will have a strong role in the sales strategy, yeah, but the communication to the customer will change dramatically. Okay. Christopher, thank you very much for opening the, the Q&A. And I already got the next one. So somebody picked up obviously on the fact that COVID has driven digitalization and that obviously there are no elements that are online, but the question really is which elements of this customer journey are actually providing such value and that they're here to stay? And this question is actually for Timothy. Timothy, I'm asking I'm that in a COVID world, what are the elements of the customer journey that you really, really add value and are here to stay? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Yulia, for, for having me and for everyone. And Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, so I think um, the parts of the customer journey that will still remain online post-COVID uh, uh, is really, it really depends on the product type. But generally, uh, what we see is whichever parts of the uh, customer journey that are more convenient uh, will end up staying online, especially when consumers have already experienced that convenience, right? Uh, so this includes uh, parts of the customer journey like pre-purchase research, uh, especially from unbiased sources to see customer reviews uh, and pricing transparency. Um, as well as the capability to purchase and just have it delivered to your doorstep. And this is something we've already seen uh, far beyond the automotive industry, right? We buy our groceries, electronics, uh, and clothes online for the convenience and safety uh, of not having to walk into a physical shop. And I believe this will be the new norm for our accessories, uh, basic car care, and simple DIY parts. Uh, I think, however, the O2O will still be a key driver of digitization for products that need experts and for other people to take on a higher for example, um, as well as people purchasing for customers who want to see and feel the car. Uh, but that being said, uh, we still believe that the share of leads and the sales generated online through O2O uh, will continue to be the fastest growing for the foreseeable future. Okay, excellent. And thank you also very much for your inside presentation earlier. It's really, really interesting what the Lazada group is doing. 
But we also have um, Shiam here from CDK. So obviously you're sort of the link a little bit between the dealers, the online, the offline. And um, so here the question was that in your experience working really closely with both manufacturers and dealer, what are actually the views now from the dealer side that um, with all of this transition to online, offline, and they're asked to do everything and everything but selling cars, Shiam, what is your take on it? Uh, first of all, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are in the world. And uh, thank you, Yulia, for uh, having me on here and CDK. So I think the online offline journey is an interesting conversation that continuously happens. So my, uh, my view and our view and the dealership's uh, view now is that just like you have different cars for different drivers with different tastes and different budgets, et cetera, every customer will decide how they want to interact with a dealership or an OEM. So it is not a question of uh, which is uh, which one or the other. Uh, the customer decides it can be one uh, or the other, or actually both. Now the key for OEMs and dealerships alike is to make that journey uh, seamless for them, whichever way they decide to go. So today you have some inconsistencies when people move from online to offline or offline to online. And at the end of the day, as uh, Christopher spoke a little bit earlier, that process will change. I don't think anybody is fighting that change. It is a matter of people, processes, and tools that need to be tweaked uh, to kind of serve the customer seamlessly, no matter how they uh, decide to do business with you. So uh, I think that debate has been laid to rest for a while at least. So uh, that's good news for every one of us. And at CDK, we are focused on the processes and tools to make that journey seamless. Thank you, Shim. Yep, I, I agree. There is no black and white anymore. It's 50 shades of gray these days. So we've got more questions coming in. Christopher, back to you. Udipa asks, um, what are you as OEMs actually doing to train the salespeople to make this big change you're talking about? So of course we are we are doing a lot of training for the for the sales uh, people and sales consultants and as I said you need you need different capabilities yeah to do online consultation yeah than you would do a uh, uh, consultation in the in the in the showroom yeah and for this kind of skills we make trainings yeah that our sales consultants are capable to serve the customers on the online channels. And these are different capabilities what you need in the in the uh, physical showroom sometimes. Yeah. Sorry, it was on mute. Um, Tim, Siam, anything to add here in terms of of training and of supporting the dealership community? I think it is absolutely right. I agree with Christopher. At the end of the day, there there is some of the processes will change and some of the tools will change. And I think everybody is collectively trying to make this uh, work together. And I have seen it in practice. Obviously, uh, I'm based in Europe. And you can see this happening quite a bit with the OEMs coming in front and taking the dealerships and uh, users through that change process. And it's brilliant to see when they work together. Perfect. Then, uh, Timothy, somebody is actually asking, obviously, you are the platform here and, and and Lazada has been doing great things, but how is actually Lazada supporting manufacturers and automotive brands in this journey to digitization, which is not trivial at all, as we have seen? Yep, absolutely. I think there are three key ways that, um, that e-commerce platforms really support brands in uh, digitization. Uh, the first is e-commerce brands, as uh, e-commerce platforms really help brands increase their online presence to mass market consumers, but in a targeted uh, and personalized manner. So I think I know brands have already been leveraging on social media to do this, but e-commerce platforms close the loop by allowing consumers to purchase uh, and make a payment, and thus converting them from becoming just a lead to a customer. Uh, and based on the products that our customers search and purchase across such a broad range of categories, um, our personalization algorithm is very accurate in connecting uh, supply and demand uh, at an individual customer level. Uh, so for example, we can we can predict what type of vehicle a customer drives and their preference for either OEM branded or unbranded uh, aftermarket products uh, based on the products that they've searched for or purchased and consequentially feature more products that fit uh, that specific vehicle to the customer. I think second as well, e-commerce platforms really help brands increase customer engagement opportunities and frequency. Uh, and this consequentially results in higher customer lifetime values and retention. 
Um, so besides generating new vehicle sales leads, uh, e-commerce platforms also enable them to sell accessories, merchandise, and O2O services uh, to the existing vehicle owners, again, with the key cap uh, capability and of, of an immediate sales conversion. Uh, and this is exactly what we did with our brand partner, Honda, in the Philippines, uh, where during Singles Day earlier this month, uh, we helped them generate over 4,500 car sales in a single day. Uh, and we also help them to reconnect with existing owners to purchase parts and accessories that can be shipped uh, directly to them. Uh, and lastly, I think e-commerce platforms just make it a lot easier for brands to come online uh, by providing the required localized uh, operational capabilities. Uh, so for example, for example, we have uh, services like Fulfilled by Lazada, where we will help our brands and sellers pick, pack, and ship their orders. Uh, and we also provide localized payment solutions like cash on delivery uh, and our own Lazada wallet, uh, which is really important in a market like Southeast Asia, where you have 198 million people that are unbanked. Okay, so interesting the link between uh, um, Singles Day and buying vehicles. So I'm um, asking about that one. So instead of offering, you get the car. Fine. So, um, Christopher, somebody picked up actually from uh, Rahul's presentation, I believe from Sawan's presentation earlier today, about this new agency model, this new way of, of a vehicle manufacturer actually selling vehicles and, and dealers having a certain, a certain role in it. So, what, what are your thoughts about it? How successful is this model going to be? And is that something BMW is actually proactively looking into? Yeah, of course, in different countries, we have different uh, sales models. The uh, agency models we just uh, tried out in South Africa, for example. Uh, but for me, as, previous, as previously mentioned, our customers today expect to see this premium brand experience across all channels, online and offline. And for many years, our sales development has focused on providing the best customer experience for further digitalization of our sales channels. And now, depending on the market and the customer target group, we have chosen the best channel for our sales activities with our retail partners continuing to be the backbone. And this is the most important. Yeah? And I think there is no solution which fits to all countries and to all, uh, to all customers. Yeah? And this is why we will see uh, different models in different uh, countries. But what is the best for one country must not be the best for the other country. Okay, thank you, Christopher. And we have got a question from Angelina. So I'll direct that to, to Xiam. Um, Angelina refers to the fact that we spoke about O2 for new cars, obviously. But um, how do you see the used vehicle resale on an O2 platform will evolve? And will this give dealers a run for their money? Well, well, of course, uh, you can you can look at it in two ways where you can assume that it's going to give dealers a run for their money, or you can look at it as how dealerships would actually adopt that change coming through. So you are seeing where uh, platforms, online platforms where people are selling uh, used cars have a very, very significant presence from franchise dealerships selling used cars as well. So it's about understanding that model and making the tweaks that are required. So, I mean, the white elephant in the room obviously is the price, right? So when, you, when you're looking at a dealership used car price, whereas an online platform price, there is a price difference. And dealerships are aware of that and they're able to now procure cars at auctions, et cetera, in this part of the world at a cheaper price and compete with normal retail, secondary retail of used cars. So it is, it is pretty much the same. It is about the customer choosing to buy online. They still need a physical activity of checking what they are buying be it from an individual seller or a dealership selling a used car, it doesn't change. And I think there's a lot of uh, commonality between the two. Thank you. And Rahul, obviously, you have spoken about this seamless customer journey in your presentation as well. And and what are your takes actually on, on the used vehicle, on the uptake of the used vehicles in this in this new process? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it is an opportunity for the dealerships as well. As uh, Sham is mentioning, it is a risk as well as an opportunity. So as long as the dealers are able to identify the need of the customers and where they are in their purchase cycle, 
I don't think it's a risk. Uh, it would not necessarily give them a risk, uh, a run for their money. Uh, it is embedded in the websites of the dealerships as well. So as long as they understand where their customers are, if they're able to embed it into their um, online websites, many of them have done it. I see Toyota Australia and many OEMs have done it. Uh, I think it would be a, a big monetization opportunity for them. Thank you, Raul, and thanks as well to you for your good presentation earlier today. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on time. So questions for Timothy, and then I think we're, we, we're close close to closing. Um, Timothy, obviously we, we are covering a lot now the Southeast Asia region with our with our IM here. What are actually the peculiarities of um, automotive brands that they have to take into consideration in this region? I think Christopher was also referring to it to regional specificities. What about Southeast Asia? Yeah, I think the Southeast Asia is it's a, it's, an, it's a region that has so much potential, right? Um, uh, there was a recent report by Google called the uh, economy in Southeast uh, E-Economy in Southeast Asia uh, and it cited that the internet economy in, uh, in this region is expected to hit $100 billion by this year and grow to $300 billion by 2025. Another interesting point as well is the average daily internet consumption in Southeast Asia is also about 50% higher than the global average. For example, in the Philippines, it's over 10 hours a day. Uh, so kind of what I'm getting at here is the, the Southeast Asia market is really driven by online content discovery and engagement. And this is also reflected in how consumers uh, shop online here. Uh, because of this, uh, personalization is really one of the most important considerations and also happens to be benefits of digitization. Um, personalization, this really means in terms of connecting with the consumers that are most relevant to you and also showing them the right products uh, to the right consumers at the right time. Uh, another key consideration as well is localization in Southeast Asia. So there are over 240 languages spoken in this region across a multitude of different cultures. Um, and e echoing exactly what Christopher mentioned earlier, each country here is very unique and needs to have its own uh, localized digital uh, digitization strategy uh, when you're rolling it out in all the different markets. Okay. So um, I believe we have one more minute um, to go. So Christopher, any closing remarks from your end that you would like to share with the audience today before, before we move to the next panel? Yeah, I, I think what, what is very clear through the whole uh, discussion, what we what we had, digitalization plays a major role uh, also for the car industry. Yeah, we see uh, a lot that the customers are changing how they communicate with us. And at the end, it's the customer who decides which communication channel he wants to use. Yeah, and we have to serve the customers. Yeah, and this is what we what we do. Yeah, and I think COVID only accelerated the trend of uh, digitalization and we will continue like that. Perfect. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Rahul, as well. Tim and Sham, it was a pleasure having you on this panel today. And um, for those of you who listened live to the session, please provide your feedback. Um, please answer to the poll questions. We endeavor to always get better every year. And with this, I would like to thank everyone and to close the panel. Thank you very much. And back to Chica. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.